Hi friends, welcome back to Calm in the Chaos Homeschool. My name is Devine, and today I'm going to be telling you about my fifth grade daughter's curriculum picks and how things are going so far. It is our 12th week of our school and that's the end of our term. We do three 12 week terms. I thought it would be the perfect time to go through what we're doing with her and how we think about how things are going so far. Now, just to tell you a bit about myself before we get started, I am I am mom to four kids, two nine-year-old boys, a 10-year-old girl, and a 13-year-old girl. We have some special needs, and then we have some highly capable as well, so just kind of a mix. I would say our homeschool style is literature-based, Charlotte Mason-inspired, and very eclectic. So just kind of a mix of those. So if that's something that you're interested in seeing, stick around and subscribe and like this video so you can see more in the future. So I'm gonna start talking about my fifth grade daughter's curriculum. She's very creative, very artistic, very busy, does a lot of activities outside of schoolwork. And I have a lot of stuff for her and that was my attempt to keep her busy and give her things to do so that she's not done way before the other kids. But really, she does not waste her time. All right, so let's get started with my fifth grade girl. So first thing we have here is oh, teaching textbooks. That's just the login page. But she does teaching textbooks, math six. So she is in fifth grade, but I feel like teaching textbooks is a bit on the easier side in general. And she's been able to do math six without a problem. So that's what we're working on this year. I do do a variety of things for my kids for math. I don't just stick with one curriculum. So the other one that we use for her a lot and I use for all my kids is Math Mammoth. Okay, so Math Mammoth, right now she's working on the grade four B, the second booklet of grade four. We started this last year, we did four A last year when she was in fourth grade and now she's in fifth grade and we're doing four B. The reason why we're not on five is I would say Math Mammoth is more challenging. It is a more challenging curriculum. It has a lot of examples. The reason why I use Math Mammoth as well as teaching textbooks in general is because teaching textbooks is very spiral. So they'll teach a concept, kind of touch on a concept. They'll do a few lessons about that and then they'll be reviewing. Most of the lesson is review and then they'll teach a next concept and they'll come back to each topic, but in a spiral approach. Math Mammoth is much more of a mastery based. So what that means is they do cover different subjects, uh, different units throughout the year, but you will focus on that specific unit for a longer time. So I like to have my kids doing a bit of both because the spiral is great for review and so people don't forget anything, but the mastery is great for just going a little more in depth with the topics. So right now she's on just on some long division problems. So I didn't really print out the whole thing, but I just have what she's working on right now. So just some examples of what the work looks like in this level. So that's Math Mammoth 4, and she's just doing some long division right now in that. So we don't, we just do a page or two of this each day. So I do want to mention that we're in the middle of, I was trying to figure out what math was best for all my kids. So that's why I have them doing several maths each. So for her, I also added another one this year. And just so you know, we don't do everything full on. We don't expect to complete the whole curriculum. I was just experimenting to see what would work. And honestly, I got this because I have a younger son and I was wondering if this might work for him. So I wanted to see the curriculum. So I got her Beast Academy and I got her level four. Same thing as with Math Mammoth. I heard that Beast Academy is at a higher level um, and I didn't, I really wanted this to be a fun thing, a supplemental thing, not her main thing. I wanted to challenge her and I wanted to try out Beast Academy. So I got her level four after looking at the examples and I think that's perfect level for her. It has a lot of logic logic puzzles and things like that and she has to call me in and we have to work on them together so i think it's giving her the challenge that i was hoping for without making it super frustrating so i really am glad i went with the level below and she actually doesn't use the books at all so but it does come with 
if you get the whole set, uh, it comes with four books, four guides, and it comes with four practice, four practice books, so four A, B, C, and D. And she just does this online, so she doesn't actually look at the comp, and just, I don't know if you know about Beast Academy, uh, but it is a comic book style, and that's why I wanted to get it to see if it's something that might work for my youngest son. He, see, he seems very drawn to this sort of thing. So I would say she is enjoying, she's enjoying it. She likes the comics. We do it online, so they have an online version. For, so she just does it all online. She reads the comics online, and then she answers the practice questions also online. So there's a lot of kind of logic type things. It's also kind of mastery based. So they do a unit, they'll do a unit on, for example, so the first four units are shapes, multiplication, and then exponents. So she is enjoying that. So <laughs> I have the three, three math programs for her. And I decided to ask her what she preferred, which two she would rather work on. So she's decided that she would like to stop math, math mammoth for a while and just focus on teaching textbooks and Beast Academy for now. So we are finishing up her division unit in Math Mammoth. So we're stopped teaching textbooks for a few few weeks while she finishes up the unit in Math Mammoth on division. And then she's gonna go back to doing teaching textbooks and do doing Beast Academy. And she can get through, I think she'll get through most of this in the year as well as teaching textbooks because she can just rush through teaching textbooks. That's not a problem for her. And this is actually what's giving her a little more challenge and a little more things, um, just some more logic, logic stuff that I'd like her to work on. So she's going to be doing that for the next term at least. So those are the three math, math curriculums she's been using for this first term and what, what's happening there. All right. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is something I'm doing with both my fifth grade, fifth grader and my sixth grader, and that is IEW's structure and style. I got the set that has the structure and style, it has the binder for the students. I have my teacher, my teacher book here, and it comes with the DVDs. So we got the DVDs, that's easy for us. We just connect to computer. So we just connect the computer to our TV screen and the girls watch it together and do it together. The reason why I got level one is it's supposed to be for third to fifth grade, which is fine. My daughter's in fifth grade, so that's fine. And my sixth grader also is, she needs it to be an easier level anyway. So that's perfect for my girls. I didn't want it, it's the first time we've ever tried IEW. I didn't want it to be too much of a challenge. So that is going well. We didn't start it until about 10 weeks in. So I, and I didn't intend to do this all in one year anyways, because I know, I know what we're like, and I know we're not going to be able to do it like four times a week, like we're supposed to. So we'll probably do it two times a week and we'll spread it over at least probably a year and a half, which is fine. We don't want to rush anything. I like the way that they teach them step by step and give such practical and good examples. So that is going well. So along with IEW writing, we are also doing the Fix-It Grammar, the first level, student book one, the nose tree. So this is going well as well. Both of my girls are doing it. We are enjoying it. It doesn't have, I think we're gonna be able to get through it, this whole thing this year. It only has, I think a hundred, not hundred, 33 weeks. So that isn't an issue. For us, it is not a lot of work each week, so it won't be a problem to get through it. Basically, for Fix-It Grammar, if you have never done it before, you, your student is learning how to edit and identify the parts of speech and to edit and learning vocabulary through a book. So they're reading the story, The Nose Tree, so by the end, of the year, they will have read the whole story. And every day, all they're doing is one sentence and they're identifying, they're learning about the, the things like the paragraph mark. And they're, so they start with identifying nouns, homophones, and end marks. 
And every week they add to what their point, what they have to write out. So they have to find all the nouns here and they have to add all the ending marks. And they're learning about the homophones there, which they're to use. And then, so the next week it's going to be about articles. So then they start adding in the articles, add the, and, and. And when they're done marking up the sentences and looking at the vocabulary words, each, each day has a vocabulary word. They use a notebook. So here's her notebook here. And so they will write the sentences that they corrected. So by the end, they will have a whole, the whole story. So she's written so far about 10 pages, I would say. And then in the back, she's writing down the vocabulary words. So she's learning how to use a dictionary to look up the meaning of the vocabulary words and writing it down. So we do this just two days a week. We do two of the days in one. I meet with them on the first day of the week, whichever school day that is. We talk about the new concept. I help them kind of find all of them in the day one and day two. We look up the, de the, def the definitions of the vocabulary words and they write them in their books. And then the next day, they will do the next part on their own. So that's how that's going. And so we kind of alternate. We'll do on the first day of the week, I'll do the stuff with them on fix it grammar. And then on the second and third day that we're home for school, we'll do the IEW writing. So that's kind of how we're setting that up. So it's not too much in every, any given day. And they just do the last two days of fix it grammar whenever they have a chance that week. So next, she is doing handwriting level five from the good and the beautiful. I mentioned in my last video, we really enjoy the good and the beautiful handwriting. So she is on level five. And just so you can see kind of what that looks like at this level, they're doing stuff like this. So writing a lot smaller, smaller handwriting. And she really doesn't need a whole lot of practice in it. She definitely probably be done by the end of this level, but I did by level six. So she'll probably do level six as well, but that's probably gonna be it. She's really good at handwriting. She actually enjoys writing and handwriting in everyday, her everyday writing. So this is how she practices her handwriting. All right, so we are sort of year round schoolers. So she's been finishing up our last years we had BJ use English four. So she just finished that a few weeks ago. And we had BJ U spelling five that I got her last year. So she's still working on the last lesson of that. And so once she's done that, I'm not continuing there. She's gonna be moving on to some other things. She's a really good speller. So I thought that maybe we should just work on more vocabulary. She really likes vocabulary. She's always asking me in the books she's reading what things mean. So I picked up two books for her to kind of develop more uh, in her vocabulary. So the first one I got her here is Word Roots. And I got her the beginning. It does say for grades three and four, but I wanted to start at the beginning. It has, when I was looking at it on Amazon in the flip through pages, it just has some basic root words. And I think it's good to know what the basic roots mean. So I started her on this one. So just to get an idea of what the lessons look like. Each lesson is about two to three pages. So they talk about prefixes, suffixes, and roots and what they mean. And then they just have some activities to help them practice those. So she's going to be finishing this one this year. And I also went ahead and got the next level. So this is for grades five to 12, and they have several levels. So I just got her level one. This one is very thick. And now that we're into doing these, I think we're gonna take most of the year to do the beginners. And we'll probably just start this towards the end of the year, which is fine. We'll start it at the end of the year and we'll just keep working on it and probably finish this next year. So that's what she's working on for some vocabulary growth. Another thing I got that looked interesting and fun for her for vocabulary is this 101 doodle definitions. And I got this because it kind of incorporates some learning vocabulary with some art to help you remember what the words mean. And so I think she's really enjoying this one. It has a lot of more, let's say more advanced work, cacophony, cavity, 
clandestine, convoluted. And then they kind of teach you how to draw a sketch that can help you remember the meaning of the word. I don't know if it's gonna work or not for learning the meaning of the word, but I liked that it incorporated art with vocabulary and she's my she's a very artistic she's very an artistic girl so i thought that if she is going to learn vocabulary that would be a fun way to do it so i think she's really enjoying this book so just another vocabulary book that i picked up for her this year and then i have this one um, this is story elements for grades five to six just a workbook for finding for learning about just story elements and I would say it's okay, <laughs> it's okay. Um, it's very short, we are almost done. I think she'll be done, she's probably three fourths of the way through this. I have definitely been second guessing, giving another thought to adding any kind of worksheets. Like the vocabulary, it's okay, they're okay. But I'm definitely realizing that I am not a worksheet homeschooler, I don't, love it. I'm trying to give her stuff to do, but I don't love marking it. And then I don't love, like, I just don't feel, I don't know. I don't feel, I don't know if it's the best way for my kids to learn. Some kids, yes. Um, but I think what I'm going to do once this is done, I am not going to look for anything to replace this. I'm going to go more Charlotte Mason and I'm going to have her be writing some narrations instead of just, um, doing oral narrations on her literature. I'm going to have her write once or twice a week on what she's reading in her books. So go a little more to the Charlotte Mason side and walk away from the workbooks. So, I mean, it's okay. I got it because it was kind of a classical, um, what book was I reading? Yes, The Well-Trained Mind, that's the book. The Well-Trained Mind, they suggested it as a workbook to use for kids for learning story elements. And so I picked it up and probably shouldn't have based on my homeschool, but we're finishing it, we'll finish it. And then we're gonna go back a little more to our Charlotte Mason um, narration and just get her to do some written narr narration instead of worksheets about story elements. So the next thing I have here, as I said, she's kind of my artistic child. So about halfway through the year, I picked this up for her. So she's been working on this since the middle of last year. So this is Artistic Pursuits, Elementary Grades 4 and 5, Book 1, The Elements of Art and Composition. And so, let's see, here's the table of contents for it here. And so she is, I, she's really enjoying this. It has 16 units and she does one or two, and then there's four lessons per unit. And so I guess that would be about half a year if you did four lessons a week and she does about two lessons a week. So that takes her about a year to do. We did get the art kit that came with all the art supplies needed. So that was super great. She has everything she needs. She just opens it up on her own whenever it's assigned and she does the art and she's been making some beautiful pieces of art. So I'm really happy about that. I think she's really enjoying it. That was a good thing to pick up there, artistic pursuits. And, here, we are doing the Big Life Journal. I think we're enjoying this. It's good, it has prompts for her to come and ask your journal buddy, which is me, some questions. And it's just about growth mindset and stuff like that. So she is enjoying this Big Life Journal. So another thing that she does about twice a week is keyboarding without tears, level four. The reason why I got her level four was just based on typing ability. It looked like she was typing paragraphs and using things like bolding and stuff like that. So that's something she hasn't done a whole lot of. She's actually a pretty good typer, but I feel like the level is right. For keyboarding without tears, I feel like it has been better at the younger levels or the lower levels, but here at grade four, I probably won't be using it next year. There's some glitches that are kind of frustrating. I kind of joke in my mind, keyboarding with tears sometimes. When she first started the level four, it was so easy. 
I was sure that we had the wrong level. And I was like talking to the company and asking like, are you sure this is level four? This is not what the examples look like. And it took about 10 weeks before it actually looked like the level that I thought I was giving where she's typing sentences and paragraphs and not just like two letter combinations. And she was just like, this is so boring. So that part was a bit of a challenge with the level four. And then there was a certain lesson that she was typing, she was typing and then like, the keyboard section was covering where she could type and there was we couldn't find any way to to not have that keyboard covering whatever she was supposed to type so she had no idea what she was supposed to type so we had to contact the company and finally they had to type it for her so that she could pass the level because there's nothing for me to be able to say okay let's just skip this section so that was a kind of a frustration for keyboarding without tears I actually would suggest at the, that level that you use typing.com or typingclub.com. Those are free versions of typing and she's been using those and those have been a lot less frustrating and has taught her how to type. So for her level, I don't know if I would suggest getting keyboarding without tears level four. The other thing that she's doing kind of on the tablet is she's doing duolingual Chinese. I am teaching Chinese to all four of my kids because I grew up in Taiwan and my daughter is from, was born in Taiwan, so she's Taiwanese. So she's learning Chinese and Mandarin and she has a tutor she meets with once a week on kind of like a Skype, Skype call. So she has that conversation and then she's doing duolingual Chinese just to do that on the side. So she does that about twice a week. So that's one more thing that she's working on. And then I guess the last thing she's working on is she does silent reading for 20 minutes every day. And that's books that I've picked for her based on Sunlight or Bookshark or other books that I wanted her to read. We do try to focus our reading kind of in the history that we're reading and then a few supplemental literature. So that's also something she does. But she spends a lot of time after she's done working on coding, scratch projects. She's created a lot of scratch product projects. She's really grown in that area this year. She does a lot of baking just on her own. We always have treats at our house, too many treats at our house. She's always baking. She makes crafts, um, arts and crafts. She pulls stuff out. She creates things. She's crocheting, she's knitting. She's just one of those kids that just always has to be busy, always has to have something to do but does a very wide range of things. So even with all the stuff that I got for her, she's still done at least an hour before anyone else is done. And that's fine because she just goes and she finds other things to do. Okay, so that is all the things I have, I think, <laughs> all the things I think I have for my fifth grade girl. As I mentioned, I probably have more than I need. Next year, I am think I'm going to keep it a little less, a little less of the workbooks. We'll use what we have, but I'm feeling more and more just to let learning be more authentic. And especially with this daughter, she does not waste her time. She's always busy. She's always learning skills. She's always growing. She has so many different things that she likes to do. So she doesn't waste her time sitting around being bored. She just goes and she finds something to do. So I think I'll probably do less next year, but that's what we have this year. And that's how things are going so far. And before I leave, I wanna let you know, there are two more days left in my Etsy store, 40% off store for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Cyber Tuesday. Anyways, I have some advent calendars in there with activities and scripture verses. So it would be perfect time to pick those up. I have homeschool planners, printable homeschool planners. So you can just have the PDF and print off as many as often as you like. I have some chore charts in there, some of the best selling chore charts on Etsy. So take a look, I'll link it below as well as link all the things I can find here that I talked about below. So take a look if you wanna see any of that more in depth. And also feel free to comment and ask questions if you have anything you'd like to see a little more about or have more of a review about, please comment below. I'd love to make a video for you if, if there's something you'd wanna see a little more of. So thanks for coming today and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.